In this session, we will learn how to create the geometry for a drone. I bet all of you must be familiar with drones. A drone is basically an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV. That is, an aircraft without a human pilot. Nowadays, drones are extensively used for doing aerial photography and video shooting, surveillance, remote sensing, and so on. Also, you can buy drones just to play with. A drone can be broadly considered as an assembly of four basic components. The first component is the central unit, which hosts the parts for controlling the drone, like the transmitter, receiver, battery, and so on. The second component is the arm, with one end connected to the central unit and the other end used to mount the third component, which is the propeller. The last component is the pair of landing skids that support the drone when it's on the ground. So, let's start to model this drone geometry. We will first have to analyze the technical drawing and chalk out a plan for building the model. We can build the central unit first using the dimensions provided in the different views of the drawing. Next, we can build the drone arm. Notice the drawing views for the drone arm on the left side of the drawing. Once we create one arm, we can pattern it to create the remaining three arms. We can then proceed to create the landing skids. If you look closely at the view named Detail A, you can see that the dimensions of the centerline of the skids are provided. We can first create this centerline curve and then convert it into a cylindrical body. The drawing shows that there are two skids, so we can mirror one to quickly create the other. The last part is to build the propellers or the blades. For this, we will import the blade geometry that was created in the earlier section. Next, we can use the pattern operation to create the remaining copies of the blades. So, we now have our plan to build the drone. First, create the central unit, then the arms, followed by the landing skids, and lastly, the blades. Let's get started. Open a new space claim session. Select the Z-axis from the Orient tool, then right-click and select Select New Sketch Plane. Click to define the sketch plane along the XY plane. As per our plan, we will first create the central unit. The bottom view shows the outermost dimensions of the unit. Click the Rectangle tool, then enable the Define Rectangle from Center option and create a rectangle at the center of the grid with dimensions 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters. Switch to 3D mode. With the pull tool already active, select the face and pull it up 30 millimeters. Select the top face and switch to sketching mode. Move the sketch grid up 20 millimeters. Orient the grid to the plan view. From the top view, it can be seen that the top section of the central unit is circular. So, create a circle at the center having a 50 mm diameter. Switch back to 3D mode. Click the Blend tool. Select the circular face, and then the top rectangular face. From the Options panel, enable Ruled Segments, and complete the operation. Let's create the bottom section of the unit. Select the bottom rectangular face and switch to sketch mode. Move the sketch grid down 60 millimeters. Orient the grid to the plan view. Create a circle with a 100 millimeter diameter at the center of the grid. Then switch to 3D mode. Click the blend tool. Select the circular face and then the bottom rectangular face. From the Options panel, enable Ruled Segments and complete the operation. Select the bottom circular face and switch to sketching mode. Press V. Create a 50 mm diameter circle at the center of the grid. Switch to 3D mode. Pull the circular face down 10 mm. The last step remaining is to smooth out the edges. 
Select the top four edges of the prism and create a round fillet with a radius of 20 millimeters. To select the edges, double click on any one edge to select the edge loop. It may be necessary to double click the same edge again until you select the required edge loop. Similarly, select the lower four edges and create a round fillet with radius equal to 20 millimeters. Select the larger circular edges on the top and bottom and create a round fillet using the same 20 millimeter value. Next, double click on one of the corner edges to select all the connected edges. Create a fillet of 20 millimeters. Similarly, create fillets at the remaining three corners. The central unit is ready. Now, let's create the arms of the drone. From the technical drawing, we can see the different views of the arm. Let's use the dimensions from these views to create it. We first need to locate the central plane on which the sketch of the arm will be created. If we look at the section view of the drone, we can see that the distance between the topmost face of the drone and the top face of the arm is 32.5 millimeters. Also, the outer thickness of the arm is 10 millimeters. So we can create a plane at the middle of the arm using these dimensions. Select the topmost face and switch to sketch mode. Select the move grid button and rotate the grid around the Z axis by 45 degrees. Next, move the grid downward along the Z axis by 37.5 millimeters. Press V. Click the circle tool. Create a circle on the left side of the model at a horizontal distance of 250 millimeters with 40 millimeter diameter. Next, click the line tool. Enable the define line from center option and create a vertical line with length 40 millimeters located at 40 millimeters on the right from the center of the circle. With the line tool still active, deselect the define line from center option and create two horizontal lines that connect the ends of the line up to the top and the bottom of the circle. Use the Trim Away tool to remove the inner circular section. Switch to 3D mode. Click the Pull tool. Select the surface, then enable the Pull Both Sides option and pull the surface on both sides by a total distance of 10 millimeters. Hide the body representing the central section of the drone. Select the flat side face on the right and switch to sketch mode. Move the sketch grid along the blue axis by 150 millimeters. Press V. Click the rectangle tool. Enable the define rectangle from center option and create a rectangle from the center of the grid of dimensions 70 by 25 millimeters. Switch to 3D mode and blend the two faces using the blend tool. The last step is to create fillets around the edges. Press S. Select the outer edges using double click and click the pull tool. Create a round fillet of radius four millimeters. If you look at the drone arm, you can see that the fillet radius is not uniform. At one end, there is a fillet of 4 mm, whereas on the other end, the fillet radius is 10 mm. This type of fillet with varying radius can also be created using the pull tool. Now, with the pull tool still active, select one of the fillet faces and enable Edit as Variable Radius Round from the Options panel. Click the arrow located at the end and hit Spacebar. Enter a value of 10 millimeters. Similarly, modify the remaining three fillets.
This completes the modeling of the drone arm. Press S. Display the drone body. Click the circular pattern tool and create four copies of the arm. Select the Z axis as the direction. Click the combine tool. Select the central body, then press and hold the control key and select the arm bodies one by one to combine. Press S. Select the edge loop where the arm connects with the central body. Using the pull tool, create a round fillet of radius 5 mm. Create fillets at the remaining locations. Now, let's create the landing skids. Before that, let's clean up the structure tree. Right-click on the topmost component and select Delete Empty Components. This will delete the empty pattern component, so there is only one solid body listed in the tree. Select the x-axis and switch to sketch mode. This will create a sketch grid along the YZ plane. Using the Move Grid tool, Rotate the grid about the vertical axis by 45 degrees. Press V. Click the spline tool. Locate the first point at a horizontal distance of 130 millimeters and a vertical distance of 10 millimeters from the center. Now, move the cursor down towards the left side and without clicking anywhere, specify a vertical distance of 150 millimeters and a horizontal distance of 30 millimeters. When specifying the dimensions, use the tab key to switch between each dimension field. Note that if you press the enter key, this point will become the end point of the spline, which is not desirable. Once the dimensions are specified, click with the mouse to create a point at that location. Now, we need to define the end point. The spline tool is still active. Using the reference dimensions, specify a vertical dimension of 180 millimeters and a horizontal dimension of 30 millimeters, the same as earlier, and hit the Enter key. The spline is now created. Switch to 3D mode. Click the Move tool and select the spline curve. Drag the Move handle at the world origin. Press the Control key and rotate the spline curve around the vertical axis by 90 degrees. Select the Blend tool and create a line between the two endpoints. Hide the drone body to view only the three curves. Press S. Select the three curves and click the Cylinder tool. Press the spacebar and enter a value of 10 millimeters and hit Enter. We now have one of the skids ready. Display the drone body. Let's mirror this landing skid on the other side. To do that, we first need to create a mirror plane. Select the X axis and click the Plane tool to create a plane along the Y and Z axes. With the plane already selected, click the Mirror tool. Then click the landing skid to create its mirror copy. Press S. Hide the mirror plane. Using the Combine tool, Combine the three bodies. We have finished creating the landing skids on the drone. Press S. The final step is to import the blade model. We will import the blade model that was created in the earlier exercise of this course. Go to the assembly menu and select the file tool. Navigate to the folder where you saved the blade model, then select the file and import it. The imported blade model has been placed within the drone body and needs to be aligned with the drone arm. Before aligning, let's internalize the imported blade component. Right-click on the drone blade component, then go to Source and select Use Internal Copy. This will copy the geometry of the drone blade into the assembly and break the link to the original file we imported. Any changes made to this blade will not be reflected in the original drone blade model. Now, with the move tool still active, 
move the blade upward such that it is completely visible. Then, double click on the red rotation handle. This will rotate the blade by 90 degrees around the red axis. Press S. Go to the assembly menu and click on the align tool. Select the cylindrical face of the blade hub. Now, zoom into one of the arms and select the circular face. The blade geometry moves and aligns such that the axis of both the selected faces are aligned with each other. With the Align tool still active, click the bottom face of the blade hub. Then select the top flat face of the corresponding drone arm. The selected surface on the blade should be flush with the face of the drone arm. It is now correctly positioned. The final step is to copy the blade model to the remaining three locations on the arms. Select the blade body and click the circular pattern tool. Select the Z-axis from the origin. Go to the Options panel and specify the circular count as 4 and the angle as 360 degrees. Then complete the operation. We have our drone model ready. Before saving the model, let's clean up the structure tree. Go to Structure Tree. Right-click the top entry in the list and select Delete Empty Components. Then. Select all objects from the tree except the solid bodies. Then right-click and delete them. Go to the File menu and save the project. Congratulations! You have completed the solid model of the drone.